One of the services I offer in my agency is what I call a website tune-up, which is essentially a type of audit. Now there are lots of different softwares out there that can do audits for you and completely automate the entire process, but for my own needs, I've always found them a little bit too surface level and they didn't always give me all the information I needed in one place. So over time, I've ended up just developing my own system that uses a few different tools and manual checks. To keep track of all this and for all the audit reporting, I've developed an Airtable base that I'm gonna show you in today's video. My hope is that you'll get inspiration to create something like this for yourself, but if you'd like a head start, there's a link down in the description where you can download a copy of the exact base I'm gonna be showing you in this video. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. So the Airtable base has four different tabs at the top here, including all the audits, which we'll go through each one of these one by one, but we also have all the tools I use, which pages are being audited, and then a list of all the issues you find. So let's start here in the audits tab, and here you can see we have a list of 65 different checks I do throughout this website audit process. So here you just have the title of each one of these tests. Next is the primary category. So if this is an SEO issue, a privacy concern, performance, accessibility, etc. Next is the importance label. So if something is very important to correct, it's labeled as high. But if it's something like the optimal length of a meta description, that's listed as low because it's just not a very high priority. Next is the testing method. I have a mixture of both automated and manual tests. So this will tell you if each test has to be done manually or if you can automate it in some way. For any of the automated tests, I list out all the tools that can be used here. This actually links to this tools tab, which we'll go over in just a second. Next is the scope of the test. So some of these are tests you have to do page by page and other tests can be done on the entire site in one go. So for instance, if we need to see if a page is indexed, we need to check each individual page to see if it's indexed. But if we need to see if the sitemap's functioning, that's an entire site type of thing. So we don't have to do that for each page we're auditing. Lastly, on this page here, what we have is an about the test section. So this just gives you some general information about what this test is for and why it's important. If we go here into the tools tab, you can see a list of all the different tools I use to carry out these audits, a URL to get to it, and then each audit that's associated with one of these tools. So when you go ahead and you need to start auditing a website, you would just go in here to the pages tab and you would list out all the pages you're gonna be auditing. So for this example, it looks like we're going to audit four individual pages, and then we'll have the entire site. The entire site kind of needs to stay in here every time since some of those issues are gonna be attributed across the entire website and not a specific page. Of course, you can list out the URLs of all these pages here, and then as we find issues, they'll get listed here associated with each one of the pages. So what we do is we go through this entire list as our audit process, and as we come upon issues, we go into this issues tab and we fill it out. So let's say we found an issue on the home page. Here under pages, we can select from any of the pages we said we're gonna be auditing. So here I'll go ahead and select home. We can go ahead and fill in the issue. Let's say it's an issue with the length of the page title. And if we bring that in here, since this is a relational database, it's gonna look up this issue and bring in more information about it, like what category it's under, how important that is, and some information about the test. Here, we can decide whether this failed or if it's just a notice. So I'm gonna go ahead and put fail on here. And if we wanted to add any notes, you can just type in any individualized notes here. So as you go throughout this process, this page is obviously going to fill up. And this is what I use to open up and go over the audit with my client. So these are grouped by things that fail or if they're just a notice. And we can go through each one of these line by line and talk about what's wrong on the current website and what we would suggest to do to fix these issues. Like I said, here on the pages, we can see since we added this fail here, we can see this list of issues here. And this can be useful too, just to see which pages have the most issues. Of course, everything in here is fully customizable. If you didn't need one of these things, you could simply delete it. And if you had something else that was important to you to add, you can just go down to the bottom of the page and add whatever test and category and importance, et cetera, that you need in this. And since it's all related, you'll be able to pull those things automatically into your audits. If you're thinking that all of this sounds pretty complex and a little time consuming, you're definitely right. But websites are complex, and if you really wanna do a good job, there's a lot of things you have to look after. Now, this is why I charge for this service, starting at about $650. 
Now, even at that price, I can't make a whole lot of money off of providing this for people, but it's a great way to build relationships and show your expertise. I hope you're able to take some inspiration from this video. And like I said, down in the description below, you'll find a link where you can sign up and get a copy of this entire base as a head start for your own auditing process. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to see the next one, then hit subscribe and we'll see you then.